to thrive, to thrive in your life, to thrive as your fullest self, your truest self. No, really, what does it mean to you to thrive? I'm Elena Sanino, and I am so excited to share with you today my thoughts on how to thrive from the inside out, even when life gets uncertain. Because I don't know about you, but life happens. I know this as a cancer survivor, and I'm gonna share part of that story with you and how I learned that there is more to life than survival mode. There is more to life than just existing, than getting by. Yes, there's a place for that. And sometimes there are moments that that's all we can do, but I would offer you that there is more to life than surviving there is thriving. And we're going to dig in today to three concrete ways to help you thrive from the inside out, no matter what happens in your life. How does that sound? Are you in? Oh, I'm so excited to be here with you to share these practices. But first, I want you to set yourself up for success. There is a resource guide that you are going to have access to. Click on it. This is going to have practices, my, the, some of my very favorite practices that I'm gonna mention and talk about today that I really, really want you to have. And if you have questions about those practices or resource, I want to plant the seed already that you can find me in the Live Your Sunrise Facebook group you can listen to the Sunrise in Your Pocket podcast, or you can go big and you can send me a message or an email and ask your question. And let's have a conversation about what takeaways you have and how deciding to thrive, because it is a choice, will help you create change in your life, no matter where you are. All right, are you ready? Let's dig in. So what does it mean to thrive? We all have different definitions of what thriving looks like. Some of us think about thriving in the wellness perspective. Some of us think about thriving in business or in our relationships or in our lives. I would offer that thriving is about possibility. And to kind of really explore what thriving does mean, I'm gonna first start with what thriving doesn't mean. How's that for fun? So to me, thriving does not mean a reliance on outcomes and finish lines as your reward, as your measure of success. It also does not mean filling up on self-care. Now that might sound a little strange to you. How could I have something against self-care? I don't have something against self-care. But what I would offer is that many of us do self-care. We add it to our to-do list. We get a massage, we take a bath, we read the book, whatever it is. And yet when we finish doing that thing, we go back to our daily life just as overwhelmed as we were before, right? How many times have you maybe had a massage or gone to do something really lovely, but then you get back into your car and the swarm of all that other energy kind of greets you and you get swept up back into it. So that is to me what thriving is not. So that begs the question, what is thriving then? To me, thriving is a practice of nurturing and nourishing your truest self. It is a practice that we absorb and to be able to absorb it, we need to know that we are nurturing and nourishing the parts of ourself that actually matter, the parts of ourself that can receive that tending, okay, that wellness, whatever it might be. It is a mindset. It is a way of life. So that is what thriving is to me. Why is this important to me? How did I get here to being a life coach and somebody who considers herself a, a, an expert on all things thriving. There you go, I said it. Well, I will tell you that for a long time, I was really good at survival mode because I had to be. In 1997, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was in my early 20s. I had gotten engaged six days prior to my diagnosis and suddenly my entire life turned upside down. But 
I'm a silver lining kind of girl. I'm an optimist. I'm all these things. And so I went in with my head on straight, knowing that I was going to survive. All things focused on surviving. Again, not a bad coping mechanism. And yet, here's the thing about that. During the 18 months that I was going through treatment, six months of chemo, five months of remission, then a recurrence that led me to a bone marrow transplant where we actually used my own cells to help me heal. I was so in survival mode, one singular focus, that I didn't allow myself to feel or experience the fear, the sadness, the grief for what my life was before that, any of those things. And what ended up happening <clears throat> is that afterwards, I realized that I had kind of been numb that whole time, singularly focused, yes, on survival, but to the exclusion of the feelings, of the moments where people that loved me were around me, where I was healing, all of those things, I kind of just glossed over them because I was only focused on that finish line of the doctors telling me that I was in remission and then eventually cured. I share all of that with you because it took me years to realize this, if I'm being honest, <laughs> years. And it wasn't until years later, my daughter is almost 16 now. So years later, I wanted two things the most in my life. I wanted to be a mom and I wanted to be a teacher. I had become a classroom teacher after I was sick. I was working on being a mom, but because of all of my treatments, that seemed out of the question. It was out of the question. So we were going through the motions for some IVF treatments. We were ready to put a donor egg in my body. And I had gone to the doctor that morning and then gone to my classroom afterwards to teach. Literally, third graders were coming into my room in 15 minutes and I get a phone call and it was my doctor. And she said, Elena, I don't know how to tell you this. You're five weeks pregnant. And I said, what? That's not possible. How is that possible? And I burst into tears. These were not happy tears. These were tears of grief because I had been told that even if I could get pregnant, that it would, that pregnancy would never be viable. And so here I was sad and frankly mad at this thing that felt unfair. And the doctor said something to me that I'll never forget. And this is why I am who I am and why I speak about moving out of survival mode and into thriving. She said, you have two choices. You could grieve or you could celebrate this life until the day you can't. And I thought, actually, I'm not even sure it took me a second. I went, I'll choose option B, I'm in. So I went home before I told my now ex-husband that I was pregnant, I bought a journal and I started writing letters to this little five week embryo who is now about to turn 16. I share this with you because I think we have a choice every single day to thrive, to choose thriving, to choose to nurture and nourish those parts of ourselves that fill us, not to the exclusion of all of the other things, because life does happen and life can feel hard and intense and unfair, but as an and, okay, they can be, they can both be happening at the same time. Thriving does not exclude hardship or challenge or intensity, nor does intensity exclude thriving. So let me share with you the three key ingredients to helping you thrive from the inside out. The first is to be awake. And that might sound surprising to you. Well, of course I'm awake, I'm standing here. No, no to really be awake, to be present. A lot of us spend time in the past or in the future in our thoughts. We tell ourselves something like 70 to 80,000 thoughts on any given day. And most of those thoughts are frankly the same or similar thoughts with different words. <laughs> so how do we show up with awakeness? 
Well, we have an opportunity to be present and rooted. One of the things that helps root us is knowing what your core values are, right? Knowing what it is that true you truly stand for that makes you uniquely you. And if you've never done core values work, I'd highly recommend it. Um, you can actually check out my Sunrise in Your Pocket episode 51 of the podcast, and that will walk you through and give you a resource to explore how to unearth and then attune to and embody your core values. But core values are only part of the equation. The most important part of cultivating awakeness is to notice what it is, to notice your aliveness, to allow yourself to be whole and present. What I know for sure is a lot of us spend time in our heads, in our thoughts, <laughs> right? And being awake invites us to not judge our thoughts, but to allow them to exist. Because I don't know about you, but the last time I tried shoving a thought or an emotion or a feeling underneath the rug, it just got bigger, <laughs> right? Sometimes I feel it in my body. It just, it turns into a thing. So we have to give ourselves permission to be fully alive and fully alive means with all the things, the joyful things, the not so joyful things, the hard things, all of it. So my very favorite practice to cultivate awakeness is called a brain dump. A brain dump is a practice to declutter the mental and emotional stuff that takes up all the space in our brain, in our heart, and frankly, in our soul. And that keeps us from what's most important which is thriving. So a brain dump, my version of a brain dump was inspired by the work of Julia Cameron, who wrote a book called The Artist Way, where she talks about the morning page practice, which are three pages of stream of consciousness writing. My brain dump came from me doing those morning pages for several years and then realizing that the three pages may or may not be important, but it was the act of showing up to the page and allowing myself to empty my brain for that moment, because 10 minutes later, my brain might be full again. But for that moment, to empty my brain, to notice and allow and not judge myself. So a brain dump could be a list. It could be stream of consciousness. It could be, for those of you that say, I'm not a journaler. I can't really, I never keep up journaling. I hear you, but I will tell you that those same people, my clients who have said that to me before, are now cheerleaders for all things brain dump and do them once a day, if not more. I brain dump every day. Perhaps for you, once a week is realistic. The, I only have two rules around a brain dump. It has to be written because if you think about your thoughts, you're just perpetuating the thoughts and there's no censoring allowed. So whatever the thought is that comes to mind, that's what gets written, right? And if you're not sure what to write about, you can start with three or four sentences of, Ellen is making me do this thing and I don't know what to write about. My hunch is that by the fifth sentence, you're going to have a new thought. You have a brain dump page, a template in your resource. It looks like this. It says brain dump, create space for what matters. And on the bottom, there's a space for gratitude. Give it a go, try it. The time isn't what's important. It's the act, it's the commitment to showing up for yourself, for all of yourself to be awake. Okay, so being awake, which means allowing, being present, noticing your mindset, all right? The second ingredient for thriving is to be curious. Being cur curiosity is one of my core values. <laughs> when you get to know me, you'll hear a lot about that. <laughs> But if you believe in the idea that becoming is mysterious, we need to allow for curiosity. And I share this with you as the second ingredient for thriving because I think so often we are focused on goals and outcomes, right? That survival mode. But even when we set goals to move us forward, we, we're only focused on what we think that finish line looks like, that we're not paying attention to anything that happens before then. So I talk a lot about setting intention, about getting clear on what you want to feel, that feeling, that sense, that emotion that that goal is about. What is the intention behind it? And then how can you attune to that feeling? That's where the curiosity comes in. Because oftentimes we can attune to that feeling 
in so many ways other than the thought, the thing that we thought we were working on, <laughs> right? So when we give ourselves permission to allow ourselves to be curious instead of judgmental, right? Having kindness and allowing our unexpected moments to come up, that is where we start to allow ourselves to thrive, perhaps even in unexpected places. So this idea of curiosity is so, so very important. There is a saying by philanthropist Lynn Twist, what you appreciate appreciates. So when you can get curious, you can start and knowing how it is you want to feel, then you can open up to feeling it. So here is the practice to cultivate curiosity, right? I talk a lot about setting intention. Well, you may not have ever set an intention before. You may be a really fabulous goal setter, but perhaps there is this idea of asking yourself in the morning. So this can be before you get out of bed, when you're brushing your teeth, when you sit down to your desk, and asking yourself, how do I want to feel when I go to sleep tonight? So this is a two-part practice. This is the first question. How do I want to feel when I go to sleep tonight? Allow that to be a feeling. Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's strong. Maybe it's courageous. Maybe it's fulfilled or contented or calm or peaceful. Whatever that is, write that down and write it as a statement, an I am statement. So I am fulfilled. I am courageous. Let that be your intention for the day. And then part two of this is in the evening before you go to bed or again when you're brushing your teeth. Notice what worked. Where did you cultivate that feeling? And allow yourself to be curious about where that showed up. Okay, you actually have also in your resource guide, um, and I really like writing my intentions down, a place to write your intention. This could be for the week, or you could make it for the day. There are some boxes here that you could write a different intention for each day, or where you could track what's working, how you are cultivating that intention. So here is the thing about curiosity. Curiosity takes away the expectation. I will share a quick story with you. Years ago, I decided I wanted to learn to surf. And I decided this not because surfing was ever something that I had been interested in, but I had been visiting a fishing and surfing town in Mexico called Sayulita. And on this day I was visiting, we went down to the beach and there were kids taking surf lessons. There was an expression on these kids' faces that was fierce and joyful and radiant. And I decided in that moment, I wanted to feel that way. So that was the feeling, the intention. So then I decided, okay, I'm gonna learn to surf. So I signed up for a women's surf and yoga retreat. Well, here's what happened, right? The goal started taking over. The vision of what I thought surfing had to look like. The on, on the surfboard stood, stands like this, right? Well, guess what? My first day, I wasn't very good at surfing. I was really bad in my mind and I cried and I cried and I cried because why could I not do this, right? And I had all the judgments. Well, here's what happened. The surf instructor paused and said to me, this is afterwards, he said, look, what if tomorrow when you go out into the water, you practice determination without expectation? And I paused and I thought, say more about that. And he said, well, here's the thing. You know how you want to feel. You told me. Could you be determined to feel that way without expecting what it has to look like? In other words, could you be curious about how you could feel that way in other ways? And here's what I discovered. I'm a really fabulous paddler, a really strong paddler. I hadn't given myself credit for that the day before. And, oh, by the way, surfing, not about standing necessarily, but it's really about catching the energy of a wave. I was doing that on my belly, but I was doing that. So when I attuned to this feeling, I could give myself permission to feel it. All right, so that is ingredient number two, to be curious. We had be awake and be curious. Are you ready for ingredient number three? Ingredient number three for how to thrive from the inside out is to embody your inner strength and wisdom. This is perhaps the most important. 
And it is my core belief that we each have an inner strength and wisdom that walks with us every single day. And you might have noticed a theme in the name of my podcast and different things, the sunrise in your pocket. I talk about the sunrise in your pocket as an example of how to nurture and nourish that inner strength and wisdom that's always within you. Because here's the thing, we all see the sunrise or we all believe that the sun rises every single day. Now, you might be like a woman who attended a talk that I did once and said, actually, the sun doesn't rise. And she got very scientific on me and I said, okay, I'll give you that. But for the purposes of today, the sun rises. Here's the thing about the sun rising. On some days, it's bold and beautiful. On some days, it's really subtle or subdued. On other days, you can't see it at all. It's behind clouds or rain. And yet we trust, we have faith that the sun is there rising in the sky, right? So too do we have that inner strength and wisdom within us. So part three of this thriving is to embody, right? That inner strength and wisdom, to allow it to guide you. So there is a quote by author um, Paolo Quillo, who says, you are what you believe yourself to be, right? That's really powerful. And so how do we show up? How do we actually allow our inner strength and wisdom to be out in the world? Well, first we ask that question in terms of being curious of how do I wanna feel, right? But then we notice and we practice feeling it. How's this? So practicing feeling it means showing up. It might even feel like fake it till you make it at the beginning, <laughs> but it's deciding what, what does that feeling represent to you? And how could you embody that on any given day? Maybe that's wearing a certain outfit that makes you feel that way. Maybe it's listening to music and singing to, to amp you up, to help you attune and then embody that, right? But my very favorite practice to help you embody your inner strength and wisdom is to visualize. Visualizing is a habit and technique that so many athletes, executives, all sorts of people use. It is a very powerful practice because we have to give ourselves permission to practice feeling or doing the things that are new to us. Oftentimes, when it comes to an intention or a feeling, the thing that we want, that we crave, we don't actually know what that looks like. We think we know what it looks like, but sometimes it's right in front of us and we can't identify it. We don't see it for what it is. So we literally have to practice feeling it and experiencing it. And the way to do that, or one way to do that is to visualize. So seeing yourself in situations or settings, feeling the way you wanna feel, literally creating movies in your brain that walk you through that process or that help that showcase you feeling that way. Visualizing is such a powerful practice and it doesn't have to take very long, right? It's closing your eyes, it can be a felt sense. Some people hear things instead of seeing things. Allow it to be whatever it needs to be for you. But visualizing and giving yourself permission to practice feeling, to practice embodying this truest version of you will lead to you actually showing up and feeling that way. So I wanna share with you a quote by Patanjali, who is a yogic scholar, who says, any practice done consistently over a period of time with love in your heart produces results. All right, this is really important. With love in your heart and consistently over a period of time. If you show up for these practices, things like a brain dump, things like asking yourself at the beginning or frankly, end of the day, right? Whenever it works for you, how do I wanna feel? and then checking in with what worked. And then visualizing yourself thriving, guided by that inner knowing, that inner clarity. Because, oh, by the way, your heart always knows. So visualizing, and I'm gonna add in two bonus practices <laughs> that are sure to amp up your thriving. The first is, are you ready? To trust your heart and know that it has the answers, especially when you're feeling stuck. So if you're feeling stuck about something, ask your heart a question. And you can get really quiet with yourself and just pause, or you could be out on a walk 
and ask your heart, what do I need to know today? And then let an answer find you. It may not be a big neon sign, but an answer will emerge. It might be in the song of a bird. It might be in the sign that you see on a road. It might find you two hours later in the lyrics of a song or something that you hear on the news, but let an answer find you. The second extra delicious, well, oops, I just shared it. <laughs> Practice is to ask the question, what would feel delicious? Right, just asking yourself that feels good. <laughs> but my favorite way to thrive sometimes, especially if I'm feeling a little bit stuck or in a rut or I've started scrolling on Facebook too much, is to pause and just ask, what would feel delicious right now? It's usually not to continue scrolling on Facebook. So give yourself permission to play with those practices, play with using a brain dump, play with ask, setting intention and noticing how what's working. Such an important thing. You guys were so good at noticing what's not working. That's what puts us continually in survival mode and just existing. Thriving is noticing what's working. It's the and. Okay, allowing that whole experience to be real. So those are my three ingredients to thrive from the inside out, even when life gets uncertain. Practicing and cultivating being awake, being curious and embodying your inner strength and wisdom. I would love to hear what takeaways you have, what questions you have, what thoughts you have about this. You can find me in the Live Your Sunrise Facebook page. You can find me as Elena Sanino on Instagram. You can check out my website, which is elenasanino.com and leave me a message or send me an email from there. I would love to nudge you to be your cheerleader as you continue to thrive and offer you any resources that I can. For now, I'm going to send you off to go thrive in your day with what feels delicious and all the things that light you up. Bye for now.